it's 2025 and you want to start getting into machine learning as a whole, right? Or maybe you're a little experienced and you don't necessarily know what sort of weaknesses or what sort of subjects you want to study, right? So in this video, I'll kind of go over a roadmap for getting into machine learning as well as becoming very proficient in machine learning. All these resources are linked in GitHub. And so it, this is basically self-study. There's no necessary any like objective view of what material you need to study, but I do have some resources for each section. The first section I would say is the introduction to machine learning, right? So you would cover the concepts of what is machine learning, key definitions, have the understanding, knowing the differences between AI, machine learning, and deep learning, right? Um, as well as like how to use different algorithms. The other idea that for kind of like more of how to get into machine learning really the beginning part programming in python and getting really familiar of how to use python as a whole as well as just getting comfortable with a lot of the python libraries that are done in data science and machine learning such as such as pandas numpy um, pytorch so on and so forth a lot of these necessary libraries the other kind of skills that i would categorize in her programming with Python is just getting familiar with like the software engineering best practices for Python as well as um, learning Git and GitHub, right? Once you have a good idea of that, I would say knowing how to set up an environment to work in these machine learning ecosystems, right? So knowing how to use Python, Drupal Notebook, um, working in the cloud, um, also working with Docker images or virtual environments or Anaconda environments, I think are very important. The other thing that's really important in my opinion too that a lot of people don't under, uh, misunderstand is if you're going to be a data scientist or a machine learning engineer, you have to unfortunately get into, let's say, a cloud environment. So in my case, I know Azure Machine Learning Studio very well, as well as um, Azure as a whole. It, there are other ecosystems such as Google Cloud um, or AWS that offer their own sort of cloud blend, but they also offer their own flavor of how to um, train your machine learning, such as AWS with SageMaker or Google Cloud AI. All right, in this next kind of like beginner part, I would say these are kind of the core mathematical and statistical foundations that you really need to cover to understand ML in my, in my opinion. So in linear algebra, there's quite a bit of uh, math you need to know, I would say, um, that applies directly towards machine learning. So I'd say understanding vector spaces, uh, matrix operations, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, understanding math, uh, matrix decomposition, um, tensor operation, tensor manipulation, right, from linear algebra. Now, if you're going to be covering things in linear algebra, you can't gloss over the probability and statistics side, right? So you have to have a good understanding of probability theory and distribution, statistical hypothesis, testing, Bayesian statistics, so on and so forth. Once you have that, I would say the final pillar of, I guess, the beginning of how to actually get started in machine learning is knowing how to do data preparation and feature engineering. This kind of just covers the basics of how to do, how to extract data, use data, manipulate it, how to handle missing data or outliers, right? How to clean and organize it, as well as knowing how to use it to explore data, use it for data exploratory analysis, right? So knowing how to visualize the data, extract useful statistical summaries, and knowing how to kind of just like tell the story of what your data is, is, is trying to tell you, right? The final bit of this category of data preparation and feature engineering here is just knowing the common tropes and kind of common things that is done a lot in feature engineering, such as um, one hand coding, coding categorical features, feature scaling, normalization of data, as well as kind of um, knowing how to do dimensional reduction, such as a PCA component analysis, right? Once you have a good foundation of how to actually get started with programming as a whole, and just knowing the basics really of statistics and, and the mathematics, I would say it's really start, it's time to start diving into the, the kind of the core of machine learning. And we're gonna break it down into like three categories. So I would say knowing classical machine learning is very helpful. And what do I mean by classical machine learning? Well, that's gonna cover your uh, regression techniques such as linear regression, polynomial regression, or even classical algorithms or classification algorithms such as logistic regression, decision trees, support vector machines, right? And then once you have a good idea of what the, the traditional classification and regression techniques are, you can kind of go into the, the more unsupervised learning really of clustering, hierarchical clustering, as well as kind of going into the ensemble methods, which is, you know, bagging and boosting, or as most people probably know, add a booster or XG boost, as well as um, 
example stacking, right? All right, so once you have a good idea of classical machine learning algorithms, I would actually focus more on the foundations of deep learning as a whole, right? And so most modern um, AI and machine learning technology is actually going to be using a lot of deep learning, I would say, in scope. So this is going to cover your neural networks, your classical perceptron to your um, multi-level perceptron, as well as um, training deep learning and how it's actually applied, right? So knowing how back propagation works, knowing activation functions for that, um, and then kind of getting familiar with the idea of different Python libraries that actually use deep learning as a whole. So this is kind of where you're going to be going into using Keras probably at first, then maybe TensorFlow 2 or even PyTorch. In most cases, um, it doesn't really necessarily matter too much as to which one you're doing. The idea is that you know how to apply very traditional foundations of deep learning into applying this into a very simple project, right? You have a good mathematical and structural approach of understanding what you know, the, the initial deep learning uh, foundations are, I will kind of go into the more advanced architectures of deep learning. This is going to cover your convolutional neural network, your CNNs, right? Understanding how convolution works at a deeper level, as well as the filters of how convolution applies filters. Um, the other application would be just knowing how to apply image processing. The other thing I would kind of cover since we're in uh, covering convolution networks is just understanding the state of the art um, architectures that are used in image classification. So basically anything from ResNet to ExfectiveNex to even, I would say more of the older AlexNet. Then I would probably go into uh, recurl neural networks, basically RNNs, um, and cover the basics idea of how to apply these and kind of just go over LSTMs, ruse right um, and how it applies to time series as well as basic idea of uh, natural language processing armors and attention mechanisms architectures actually are so this is going to cover your self-attention mechanisms right your foundations of BERT and GPT models, right? And then kind of goes over the idea of how to actually create these large language models. Once you have a good idea of, let's say the transform and attention model, I would actually shift my focus and learn how to apply, let's say, uh, generative models, right? So this is gonna be your GANs, right? Your general adversarial networks. Other step, which is gonna be variational autoencoders, the application of how to synthesize data and then transfer or even apply this and do some transfer learning or know how this is applied for mid journey, right? And all these sort of like visual networks, right? Deploy these into, let's say, a, a simple model to be actually used, right? So this is gonna be, be including if you're using any of the cloud services, know how to deploy these, right? Into different environments and know how to package all this information to deploy, it, which is basically gonna be covering machine learning in production, so MLOps, right? So knowing how to de deploy these into, let's say, various environments, right? Knowing how to containerize if you're using an image or how to containerize your, let's say, your virtual environment, your anaconda environment, right? Know how to apply the basics of how to monitor your model and maintain it over time, right? So this will cover anything from, you know, your uh, model drift or even data drift, right? as well as knowing how to retrain a model effectively and how to get better results, how to fine tune it, right? And then what I would also just learn a little bit of uh, CICD, right? Continuous integration and continuous deployment for machine learning. Uh, you don't have to know the whole ecosystem of CICD, right? That's a whole, um, you know, job title of DevOps, but knowing the basics of how to deploy these using GitHub or Azure DevOps or even other sort of like environments, right? You want to create a couple caps of projects in each step along the way, right? So some ideas are build a very simple image classifier, right? Um, develop the foundations of how, to, how chatbots are using transformers, right? Create a recommendation system, right? And then the idea is once you have a good selection of projects, right? I would probably go anywhere from three to five as a good portfolio really for your capstones and then know how to present it and, you know, kind of let people know what you've been doing, right? This is kind of getting just feedback as well as um, just making sure that whatever you're creating is actually solving a real world problem. So maybe you could write a blog post um, and that's basically it really. These are kind of like, an overview and roadmap, if you will, um, for machine learning, if I was going to get into it right now, 
um, in my opinion. There's a lot of material down here, and again, this isn't this is my best attempt to create a very open source free roadmap for people to understand. Yeah, let me know if this is a really good output. I'm gonna try to clean this up with some feedback and then hopefully get back with you or get back to everyone with some better resources in the future. But this is kind of like my first attempt of creating a roadmap for machine learning for anyone to learn. This is, these are my suggestions. Hope you guys liked the video. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one.